This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. With me, all the way from Texas, Corpus Christi, still WBA champion, Jamie McDonnell. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good, thank you. Absolutely chuffed to bitch. Well, obviously, everyone at home here has just been, obviously, watching it over on Sky Sports. And, uh, you know, after your first performance, questions were asked whether you could repeat it. And, um, you know, how do you compare the two performances, Jamie? was an easier fight in there. I felt in control. Um, I felt like I dominated. Um, and I wanted to make a statement. Um, I did want to get a stoppage, but I didn't want to force it too much. Um, but I felt in control and I dominated it. And, you know, and got the, got the win. And, you know, the, they're saying that the Comedia, he won a close fight and Comedia should have got it. I don't know what fight they were watching. Do you know what I mean? I probably thought I won by four or five rounds myself. Um, and just really enjoyed it, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, Comedus did start well in the first couple of rounds, but after that you found your rhythm and uh, the jab was working a treat for you. Yeah, I know I know the first two rounds, uh, the plan was to try and pinch one or two, three rounds out of the first six. Because we know I come on strong after six. Um, so, and the third, I think you won maybe the first one or two. Um, and I started to put it back. And then after five and six, I just felt like I dominated it, do you know what I mean? I was coming out of the exchanges and popping in with a jab. Um, it didn't really hit me with anything. I uh, caught him with a couple of shots. But uh, the speed, you know, the, you, you feel him a little bit, but I think that's more down to his speed uh, than anything, you know what I mean? He's not a big banger, but his speed will carry a bit of power. So um, it, didn't, it didn't feel like you were ever going to hit me, but I didn't want to start exchanging with him. Um, you know, obviously to start getting drawn in, you know, it's going to start hitting the weight fast combination. So I just stuck to what I did, used the jab, and you know, it made it an easy night. So I mean, from the first fight, what happened in the third round? That must have been somewhere in the back of your mind that you know, Kamida, you know, could pull that out of the bag at some point. But you didn't look like he was really in any danger, to be honest. No, yeah. To be fair, you don't think that. You know, it did back of your mind. You know. Someone says it into his, you know, the line. Uh, he is there, you know what I mean? It can happen again. So we obviously went back in the line, so I'm a little bit cautious. Um, we tagged away a couple, uh, they didn't really hurt, uh, you know. Uh, so that's why I had, to, I had to stick to my game plan more than anything, you know, so I didn't get tagged away in the shots. Um, and I just kept throwing him in, you know, the later the, fight, the fight gets on, the more it's behind him, the more he's going to press. Um, yeah, so really, really happy with, it, with the victory. What was the atmosphere in there like? Because it, it seemed a bit subdued in there. Uh, when you walked in, what was the atmosphere like being in there? There was not really no atmosphere, to be fair. You know, um, there weren't too many in there, probably a few, few thousand. Nice arena, big arena, but, you know, they only had a few chairs. Um, it is what it is, you know what I mean? It's part of us getting jobs on, but there was enough atmosphere there. You know, when he, a you a few roars, a few cheers, but um, not spectacular, but... You know, it's what it is. I mean, speaking to you in Doncaster um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you said that even after the first fight, you didn't feel like you really received the credit. But you've been out to America now twice uh, and beaten, you know, one of the best in the weight. So where does that put you? I don't know. You tell me. I think <laughs> well, well, you know what I mean? You know, to come to America and win twice and win even easier... And obviously I got the knockdown in the last round, it was kind of a bit of a slip, but I still caught him. Um, you know, so that just meant they put me on about a foot and made the last round a bit easier. Um, but you know, I'm up there now, I've come to America twice and I've got two wins and the second performance was twice as good as the first performance and I'm feeling fit and strong and good, you know what I mean? So uh, hopefully we'll be back out here. Um, I'm hoping, you know, fighting someone else. Um, you know, a ring's a ring to me. And I believe at bantamweight, I'll beat anyone. I'm big and strong for the weight. Um, you know, so wherever the fight is, you know, I'll go there. You know, and I'll beat them. You were obviously stripped of your IBF title. Um, you should have fought for the WBO last time, but obviously they wouldn't sanction the, the unification. Are you a little bit disheartened that you should have more belts. You know, to to match what you've done in your career at your weight. Yeah, I can remember getting on last time after the fight, and after a week or something, I'm thinking, I got my belt started to do some, something down at Kigmo, I think it was the rugby game, and I'm thinking, I should be getting a WBO belt out here, but, you know, that's, 
that's that side of boxing, you know what I mean? They didn't sanction it or something for whatever, but, you know, I've got a couple of world titles and I'm sure, you know, I can pick a few more up. Um, I won't see what fights come my way, but, you know, I believe that Bantam weight I'll clear up and down, you know what I mean? So let's just get them fights made and crack on. Just, just finally, obviously, this is the big question now. Obviously, at Bantamweight, you've done what you've done. How or how much of fault have you got of, of moving up to Super Bantamweight? I keep saying it every time, you know, I'm going to move up after this fight, but I make the weight so good, you know what I mean? I had a nutritionist on board, and I felt so fit and strong going into the, you know, I was in the gym a few days before, smashing 12 rounds out in a little sweat box. I'm feeling fit and strong, you know what I mean? So, um, I spoke to Baddy and he said, well, you know, what, what are you on about moving up on? I said, I'm all right at Bantam, you know what I mean? I take each fight as it comes. Um, you know, obviously I'll move up when I'm ready to move up. There's some big fights there, but if, there, if there's some money fights left at Bantam, I'll keep going at Bantam. Um, I'm sure there's one or two fights, at least one more fight left in me, you know, I'm feeling really, really good. Um, and you can see in there, you know what I mean? I could have done 15 rounds again to eat. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be campaigning at Bantam for one more fight. And, um, you know, let's see what happens after that. Um, a lot of people, you know, are obviously talking about potentially if you do move up, there's a fight there with Scott Quigg that could be easily made. But if you, you know, if you focus on, on, on Bantamweight at the moment, then that might have to wait. Yeah, that's it, you know what I mean? It, you know, that's the easiest fight to make out there. I, I, I read something in the what I mean, I probably said. The mechanism, I'm calling him out. I'm not calling him out, <laughs> but it's just obvious when I move up. We fight, you know, we can make the fight, and um, he's a good fighter, I'm a good fighter, it's simple, you know what I mean? But at the minute, put one more fight left at Bantam, and when I do move up, I'm sure the fight will get made at some time, you know, uh, we're both from the UK, it's a big fight, but at the minute, you know, I'm, I'm campaigning at Bantam, I'll stick each fight as it comes, you know, as long as there's some big fights there, um, you know, if I'm fighting out in America, that's the dream, you know, that is the dream, so, I mean, so stay at Bantam, you know, keep winning, and when I do move up, we'll take it from there. How much credit do you give to Dave Caldwell for the job that he's done since he's come in? Fantastic job, you know, he's, he's more buzzing than me. Um, I think he'll feel a little bit fresh, you know, with me training with him, you know, but we've been working on a lot of different things in the gym, um, and it showed tonight. Um, I give it all the credit to him, and he, he's, on, he's on me all the time, you know, with me tight, don't walk about, rest, do this, do that, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's all, it's a bit annoying, you know, when you want to be chilling downstairs and loving all that, but, and he's telling me to go up to the room, he's it's doing it for a reason, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, um, I've done everything he's asked me to do, uh, and he's paid off, um, you know, so anything he asked me to do, I'll just do, and hopefully we'll keep with it. All right, well, listen, Jamie, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Thank you very much for talking to us. You can get back to your Budweiser now. So, uh, yeah, you're... cheers, cool. I want to celebrate now and I'll probably see you in a few days of uh, the next match of job. I'm sure you will. Is Dave about, is he? Where is he? Dave is about somewhere. He's knocking about anything. He's got changed. He's knocking about in his track to a bar. He's down there. Do you want me to get him? Well, yeah, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll try and give him a ring myself and uh, try and get something else with him and... You know, Dave. Okay, cool, I'll yeah. catch you later, mate. All right, mate. That, thank you very much, Jamie McDonald. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you.